And I do feel like God has something special for us here today. I feel like the Lord spoke to me. And we are, uh, I know that it's Father's Day, but I do feel like, amen, what the Lord has given me for today is an important message. Amen. I feel like it's very, very important. Amen. What the Lord would say to us. Amen. In the book of Acts chapter number 1 and beginning to read with verse number 9, if we could stand together in honor to the Word of God, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 9. Amen. This is right. The last words that Jesus had spoken before He ascended, amen, was in verse number 8. But in verse number 9, the Bible said, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood beside them or by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing? up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven there were two that stood beside them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee why stand ye gazing up into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. This same Jesus is coming again. This same Jesus is coming again. Hallelujah. And I want to be ready for his soon return. Let's love the Lord in this place today. I worship you, praise your name. I give glory and honor to you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I am anxiously awaiting your soon return. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord, and we honor you. We give all glory and honor to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are looking forward to the day that you call us home. Oh, hallelujah. I love you, Master. I praise your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the Word of God. Amen. When we, when we speak of the coming of the Lord, amen, there are many things that come to mind in many different directions, amen, that an individual would be able to go with the coming of the Lord, amen, for... In Revelation, Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man a man to the works that he has done. So we understand that the proclamation of angelic beings, amen, in Acts chapter number 1, when they said, Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into the heaven. Amen. We understand today just a little portion, amen, of the rapture that will happen one of these days to the church of the living God. Amen. For as Jesus was speaking to them as they were walking up that mount, it was a day like any other day. Amen. There wasn't anything that was supposedly different in that day. It's just that when they got to the top of the mount, Jesus had said, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he finished speaking, hallelujah, suddenly something began to happen. It had happened, amen, several years before with a man by the name of Elijah. 
Elijah, the Bible said, had been caught away in a whirlwind. Only this time, amen, when Jesus ascended, amen, as he was ascending, the disciples began to watch as his feet lifted the ground. Amen. And they watched him ascend into the heavens until the clouds, amen, covered him from their eyes. They could no longer see him. While they were standing there, there were two that stood beside them in white apparel. I'm sure that as they watched the disciples, the disciples, I'm sure, were, amen, standing there with their mouth wide open. After all, they'd never seen anybody ascend into the heavens. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but if I saw somebody and I didn't know about the rapture of the church, Amen. If I if I just standing there and all of a sudden the fellow standing next to me, you know, begin to get off the ground and you know go higher in the, in the air and there wasn't no ropes of tied tied to him. Amen. Uh, I just got a sneaky suspicion my mouth would be open. Matter of fact, I, I might do some running trying to get away from the spot. <laughs> The only reason that they didn't run is because they knew who he was. Amen. And so when they watched him ascend, there was an amazement that came upon them as they watched him ascend into the heavens. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, the, and the angels, they looked at him and they, at, the, at the disciples that are just amazed at what they're seeing as he's ascending into the heaven. And they said, what are you guys so amazed at? What's the big deal? Because angels can, you know, scoot up and down with no problem. For man, we, you know, I'm stuck with gravity. <laughs> Every time I jump, I can rest assured I'm coming back down unless the rapture's taking place. You know, even when I'm on a trampoline, it might take me a minute, but, uh, you know, I'll be back down a little bit, <laughs> a little bit slower than what I would if I was jumping on the ground. Amen, because I'm stuck with gravity. And they watched as he, as he ascended, and the, and the angels looked at them and said, what's the, what's the big deal? He, he, he ascended, so he ascended. Yeah, well, and then, yeah, but did you see? You know, he was here, and now he's up there. And then, yeah. <laughs> and they said, you go to Jerusalem. Because there is a promise that's coming to you. Yes. This same Jesus, who you saw his feet leave the ground and head into the heavens, is going to come back just the same way that you saw him leave. Right. Now that's been 2,000 years ago since that happened. And he has not come back as of yet. But I have a message today to let you know that this same Jesus that they saw ascend into the heaven 2,000 years ago, just because he hasn't, don't mean he ain't. Hallelujah. There's coming a day. Amen. I don't know if it might not be today when this same Jesus is going to descend, amen, from the heavens with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. I've got words of comfort for us today. This same Jesus is coming back again. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I can't explain everything that's going to happen. But I do know that it will happen one of these days. I do know that this day could be just that day. Amen. Jesus could come back today. Jesus could come back, sound the trumpet, and we could leave this world behind. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And on Monday morning, those that aren't ready at my job, they'll be taking the attendance and they say, you know, in 11 and a half years he's, he's worked here, there's never been a time whenever he's called in, that whenever he hadn't called in, when he hadn't showed up for work. But he's a no-call, no-show. 
Don't he realize that if he, if he does that two more times that he's fired? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and somewhere else, you know, they, they're going to serve me my papers, but they can't find me to serve me my papers. Oh, hallelujah. He didn't show up. Well, praise the name of the Lord. And the bill collectors. <laughs> I like this part. <laughs> and those bill collectors. Amen. Yeah, he's always made his payments before. But I, and, uh, and if, he, if he's going to be late, he's always called us up and let us know he's going to be late. But, uh, man, he's a month due. We're just going to have to take his house away from him. And I'm going to get a fine from the city that said, you ain't mowed your lawn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can go ahead and give the fine for the snow, too, because I ain't shoveling it either. <laughs> go ahead and cut off the lights, because <laughs> I ain't there. Oh, hallelujah. What I want you to know today, amen, is I'm not talking about a fairy tale. Jesus Christ is coming back, and we're getting ready to leave this world behind. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Our hope is not in what this world has. I'm not just looking forward to going in and punching in again tomorrow at Home Depot and waiting on Friday till I get a paycheck. I'm not waiting on a time, amen, whenever I get a couple days of vacation, but I'm waiting on the day when he comes back for me. Oh, hallelujah. I have a blessed hope. I have a hope that's beyond this world. I have a hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Now, the disciples were a little bit questioning. And, uh, and in, in John chapter 14, Jesus made this statement. Amen. He said, let your, not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you. <laughs> hallelujah. I will come again. Amen. Do you, do you believe what he said? Hallelujah. He said, I'm going, but I'm coming back. Amen. I'm going, but I'm coming back. Amen. Just because I'm gone don't mean I'm not coming back. Amen. It might not be today, but he is coming back. Oh, hallelujah. And he's coming back for those that have made their hearts ready. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'll tell you a little story, amen, about my cousin since, uh, since uh, he ain't here to defend himself and, and uh, since it's been so long ago, my, my cousin and uncle, uh, their families, they were uh, missionaries over in Africa, and I can't remember which country it was. I believe it was Ghana, maybe the Liberia. Was it Ghana? Amen. And uh, in Ghana, there was a civil war that was going on at that time. And... Uh, and the news came to them, you have 24 hours to get out of the country, otherwise they're going to kill you because, uh, because of the Civil War, and they don't want anything to do, amen, with church, and they don't want anything to do with the whites and this type of stuff. There was a lot of, a lot of unrest. And so they had 24 hours to, uh, uh, to leave the country. When they left the country, uh, they, they were hoping that everything would blow over and they could come back in real quick. And, uh, and so... Uh, they, they left all of their belongings. They just had each one of them took a suitcase, and they said, "We have an emergency." They told everybody that was that uh, that they knew. Uh, they said, "We have an emergency, and we have to get to the United States." They didn't tell them what the emergency was that they were going to save their bacon, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by leaving Ghana. You know, that was the emergency was getting out of Ghana. It wasn't that they had something in the United States, but they said, "We have to get out." And we have to go right now. And we have an emergency uh, that we have to attend to. And so they left Ghana. And, uh, and they got back to the United States uh, a day or so later. And, uh, and they, uh, they spent some time in the United States. And finally, there came, uh, they got word from Ghana that said, uh, the unrest is settling, but it's not settled all the way out. And it looks like it's going to be a long, uh, a long time. Uh, that uh, that we, uh, 
it's going to be a long time before somebody can come back into Ghana and be a missionary. And so they said, if you want to get your belongings or settle out your estate, right now is the time. You have just a short amount of time to do it. And so they went back into Ghana to, to uh, take, care of, uh, take care of the house and stuff. Well, they had told uh, the, the groundskeeper and they had told the, uh, the lady that, that tended the house, uh, they said, now we're going to be gone but we will return. She said, you will be back? And they said, yes. And, uh, and she said, we couldn't tell them when we was going to come back, but we thought that, uh, uh, you know, she'll take care of the house for a few weeks, give us a little bit of time, and whenever we came back, we'd look her up and pay her for the amount of weeks, and then she would just say, uh, I, I stopped taking care of the house whenever I saw that you weren't going to pay me, but now that you've come back, you know, they just said, we'll just take care of when we get back, and they just let it go. And they thought, you know, a couple of weeks, and, the, and they'd be back. Well, it wasn't a couple of weeks, it was, it was months down the road. And when they came back, uh, my cousin, uh, Kevin Blake, told me, he said, he said, we got back and he said it was really kind of a weird feeling, he said, because when we, when we got into, the, into our, our, where, our, where our property was, it was all well-groomed. They'd kept, they'd taken care of the grass the whole time. So we opened the door and uh, the, 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 the floors were all swept. He said, in, in Africa, it just takes a day or two for the dust to just build up. And he said, there was no dust. He said, it was, it was spotless. He said, open the door to the refrigerator. And he said, there was fresh water inside the refrigerator. And he said, there were fresh flowers on the table. And he said, I, I looked at the lady. I asked her, she, I said, uh, why did you, how did you find out that we were coming? Oh, she said, you told me you were coming when you left. And every day I put new flowers on the table. And every day I put new water in the refrigerator. And every day they take care of the grounds. And I make sure and we make sure that everything is clean. Because you told us and you've never been bad on your word. You, every time that you told us something, it always Amen. You always accomplish that. And it's been months, but we believed you that you would come back. Can I tell you that Jesus Christ is coming back in that same way? He's coming back for those that would have the attitude, I'm putting fresh flowers on the table. I'm going to put new water in the refrigerator. I'm going to make sure that the grounds are clean because I don't know when he's coming, but every promise that he's ever made, he's kept his promise, and I will be ready for the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be ready if the Lord comes back today. Hey Amen. I'm not going to have to say, oh, I'm sorry. i got to clean up over here. i got to make sure this is all right. But if he comes today, I've made up in my mind, I will be ready for the soon return of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I'm coming back. And when I come back, I'm coming to catch you away. And I'm going to put you in those places that I've been preparing for you. He's coming back. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus made this statement in Luke chapter 21 and verse number 18. He said, talking about the signs of the times, he talks about the earthquakes, he talks about, amen, wars and rumors of wars, he talks about all the things that's going to happen right before the coming of the Lord, days of Sodom and, and uh, days of Noah and so on. At the end of his statement, he makes this, he makes this little, uh, little statement and he said, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. He said, when you see some things begin to come to pass, then your attitude ought not be, amen, I'm just going about business as usual. But you ought to be saying, he's coming back. 
And I don't know exactly if this is the day, but I believe that the clouds, hallelujah, are holding him today. I believe that today is the day that my feet are going to leave the ground. And if I go to bed at night, God, if you come tonight, amen, you're welcome to wake me out of the sleep. Amen. And get me out of this place into a place where there's no more pain, where there's no more sorrow, where there's no more suffering. Hallelujah. Amen. Into the place of everlasting life, into the place of joy forevermore, into your presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, the way that you're going to make sure that you make it is for those that are looking up. Hallelujah. Don't know if it's going to happen, but I just believe that it'll happen today. Amen. Amen. I, and, and, I don't, and I'm not talking about it in the natural, always looking up. Amen. We might run into people. Amen. If we do that, but <laughs> had a lot of car accidents. But I believe that there ought to be an attitude that says today could be the day. Amen. And I'm ready for his soon return. Lord, if you come today, amen, if I'm driving my car, amen, I'm sorry about all the lives that might be lost if, if I cause it an accident, but I'm thankful that you're taking me home. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. I'm sorry that the insurance is going to have to pay for the car to get, get fixed, but I'm not sorry enough to stick around. Amen. Because the thing that I'm looking forward to more than anything else Amen, is the coming of Jesus Christ. If I'm on my job and I'm helping a customer and all of a sudden the Lord comes, I'm not going to say, Lord, you're going to hold off. I've got to sell this refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Amen. Whatever we're doing, amen, when the Lord comes, that has to be dropped. Because he ain't coming another time after that. Amen. Saying, oh, I see you got a couple more things you got to get ready. Amen. He's just coming. Boom. This is the time that you're going to come. Amen. The Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. He's coming that quick. And so I need to be ready. Amen. And the way that I will be ready, one of the ways is by looking up, lifting up my head, because my redemption draweth nigh. Now, in the book of... 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, it tells us a little bit more about it. Amen. About this coming of the Lord, this rapture. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, we shall not all die. Amen. Sleep in this passage is talking about death. He said, We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Now we're talking about corruption and, and mortality now. And so I'll just, I'll just kind of break it down into where we live. I'm 51, 52 years old. Just right around the corner be 52. <clears throat> and if, I, if I'm doing the math right in my head real quick. And uh, in August I'll be 52. And uh, I'm not as fast as I was when I was 21. Uh, you know, something's happened to me. And I ain't going to call it uh, age, but well. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, after I, whenever I was 18, I could run 12, 14 hours on very little sleep at all. Now I work eight hours and, I'm, and I, I sleep for eternity. You know, and I get tired easier. And uh, when I was 18, it was nothing for me to lift up a big amount of weight. Now it's, the big weight is me. And that's about all that we're going to be lifting because something's happened to me. I had a lot more hair than what I do now. Matter of fact, I got a few more wrinkles now than what I did then. And my chest has kind of settled down just a little bit. And, uh, and people say, oh, you're 50, over 50, over the hill. I said, no, I'm still on top, but I know as well as the rest of them do that if the slide goes like the last, uh, like the last 50 years have gone, it won't be long till I'm at the bottom of the hill. Because it's going fast. 
Do you, I, I want you to understand what I'm talking about. Amen. Because this corruptible, yes. this old flesh, amen, that's getting arthritis, amen, this old flesh that can catch every disease under the sun, amen, this corruptible, it must put on incorruption. Amen. This old man today is 52, but I'm telling you, there's coming a day whenever this old man is going to be considered a young man in the presence of God, and I will live throughout eternity. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. My hope is not in this corruption. My hope is not in this flesh. But my hope, hallelujah, is that this same Jesus, which he has seen a sin, shall so come in like manner, even as ye have seen him ascend into the heavens. Well, hallelujah. He's coming soon. And in case anybody here is wondering, the things that are happening around us are not coincidence. It's not by accident, amen, that, uh, that Rome is calling, amen, for the Jews and the Palestinians to come together for peace talks in Rome by the Pope. That's not by accident. That's in the book. Amen. It's not by accident that Syria is in a turmoil. It's not by accident that there's civil war in Iraq. Amen. That Middle East being all in turmoil. Can I tell you? Amen. We're living in perilous times. And if you've ever begun to look up, right now is a time you ought to be looking up. Hallelujah. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is coming back. Hallelujah. Now, Amen. So for the church, it's, a, it's an incredible, it's an incredible moment because this, this corrupt is going to put on incorruption. This mortal is going to put on immortality. Amen. I'm not going to say 75, 85, 95 years and I'm going to pass away. Amen. But on that day, oh hallelujah, this mortal is going to put on immortality and there'll never be a death date. Hallelujah. In heaven. There'll never be a cemetery in heaven. Amen. There's never going to be, amen, a funeral home in heaven. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's no hospitals there. For there's no sickness and there's no pain up there. And he's coming to bring us home to be with him. Oh, hallelujah. And he says so in verse number 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Whatever you're doing for God today, you just keep on doing it because your labor is not in vain. What you're doing for God and serving Him, your labor is not in vain. I've got a home in glory because my labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. Why are you so faithful to the house of God? Because I've got my labor is not in vain. Why do you do the things that you do when you're praying? Amen. Why are you doing the fasting? Why are you giving? Amen. Why are you, why are you doing all this stuff? Because I know my labor is not in vain. Amen. There's going to come a day when I hear the trumpet sound. No hallelujah. Amen. So in, so in chapters first Corinthians, or second Corinthians chapter number 5. He gives us just a little bit different glimpse of it. And he said, Wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. The reason we're working is because whether we're on the earth or whether we've already been buried, amen, in death, he said we may be accepted of him. So he said because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. He said, I didn't say just the saints. But everyone, that everyone may receive the things done in his body. According that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. He said, he said uh, now the reason I'm working is because I'm planning on getting a reward. A good reward. But he said, when we all stand on that day. Not just the saints. He said, we all going to get a reward. 
He said, you're going to get a reward. If you've been doing bad, you're going to get a reward for the bad that you've done. If you've been doing good, you're going to get a, a reward for the good that you've done. And then he said in verse number 11, amen, this is, a, this is an awesome verse, amen, in, in, in the way, that, in, in awesome, in a, dreadful, in a dreadful sense of the word, for he said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are manifest unto God, and I trust also made manifest in your consciences. He said, I'm telling you the reason, amen, that I, that I strive so hard trying to get somebody to become a believer is because I know there is the terror of God. There's the bad side of judgment. There's the bad side of the reward. And I don't want anybody, amen, to accept, amen, the evil part. I don't want anyone to be a part of the bad part amen of the judgment I want everybody amen to be a part of the good I know the terror of the Lord I know the judgment of God and I know I don't want anybody to go there yes, yes. and can I tell you as a pastor I don't want anybody to go to hell I want everybody to go to heaven amen I don't want anybody not even somebody that says they hate me. I'm going to try my best to pray for them. I'm going to try my best to reach to them. Amen. Because I don't want anybody to go to that place. Amen. So I know the terror of the Lord. That's why I labor. That's why we reach. Amen. That's why, that's why it's so important that whenever we see somebody that isn't living right, that we try our best to reach to them. Because there really is a place called hell. And there really is a place called heaven. And everybody's going to spend eternity somewhere. Everybody's going to spend eternity somewhere. And uh, people use hell as a slang word. And they, and they say, I've, I've lived through my hell on earth. No, you really haven't. The worst thing that somebody has ever done when, they've, when, they have, when they've, uh, they said, I've lived my life in the hell on this earth, would never be able to even scratch the surface of what it's really like to be in hell. And so I have a conviction today that says I, I've got to reach to those, amen, before it's too late because there really is a coming of the Lord. And there really is a last judgment. Amen. Col uh, Colossians chapter number 1 and verse number 27. Oh my, and to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery unto the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He said, I, I want you to know that the riches of the glory that is to come it's Christ in you when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost you have been, you have received the earnest of your inheritance that glory that you begin to feel when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost amen that presence of God amen whenever you're worshiping and you feel the presence of the Lord is just scratching the surface of what it's going to be like when we get to heaven Amen. That's why he would say, I have not seen an ear, hath not heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. Now I've been in some awesome, in some awesome services where the presence of God was so thick, amen, in the place and you didn't want to leave because it was such an incredible move amen, of the Holy Ghost in that place, but can I tell you that the most awesome service that I was ever in, amen is nothing in comparison with what it'll be like when we step into His presence forevermore I'm looking forward to that day. Oh, hallelujah. This same Jesus whom you saw ascend shall so come in like manner. It's not a different Jesus. It's the same Jesus that ascended is going to come back. Oh, hallelujah. And to the church, I bring you good news today. He's coming back for us. Yes, yes. Oh, hallelujah. 
Verse number 23 said, Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. He said, The reason that I'm giving warning is so that everybody can be ready. I don't want anybody, amen, not to be ready. In Titus chapter number 2, amen, in verse number 11, amen, he gives us this instruction. He said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. Amen. You ever heard that the verse that said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Yeah, I understand that that's there, but this verse in Titus is just as powerful. He said, Because the grace of God that bringeth salvation... Grace brings us salvation, but there's something that has to happen whenever grace brings us salvation. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. He said, you can't live the same way you always lived after grace comes into your life. You can't live the same way that you've always lived and think the same type of things and say the same type of things. There's got to be a change in your behavior. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. Romans say, amen, gives us this. Shall we, gives us this passage. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we which were dead to sin continue any longer? Amen. Therein. He said the grace of God is our teacher that teaches us denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. Why do we do that? Because we are looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. The reason that I'm trying my best to live righteously isn't so that you can say, man, he's righteous, but I'm living righteously because I have a hope that one day the Lord Jesus Christ is going to step on the clouds the same way that he left, and I want to be ready to meet him in the air. Oh, hallelujah. There is a blessed hope in the glorious appearing. Hallelujah of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us. Amen. That he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and unto them... Oh, hallelujah. Listen to what he said. Unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Unto them that look for him. So those that ain't looking ain't going to find him whenever he comes back. If those, if you're not living in, a, in an attitude of I'm going to be ready, you probably won't, well, you'll probably miss it. It's very important that we keep our hearts ready for the soon return of Jesus Christ. First John chapter number 3 and verse number 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him. If you're hoping in Jesus Christ. Amen. And hoping in the rapture. Every man that hath this hope in him. Purifieth himself. Even as he is pure. First Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which according to his abundant mercy. Hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved reserved in heaven for you hallelujah have you got a reservation made hallelujah is your reservation made are you ready if the Lord should come today hallelujah for those that are ready amen the reservation amen the reservation lines are still open amen there can be a place reserved in heaven for you praise the name of the Lord hallelujah reserved in heaven for you. He said, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. 
Wherein ye were greatly rejoiced, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through the manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. He said, I know that you've gone through some things. He said, but whenever you come out of that trial, let it let you come out as gold. He said, because whenever you come out as gold, you give glory and praise and honor to Jesus Christ. And when he appears, hallelujah, that trial that you went through, amen, gives praise to him. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. First Peter chapter number 5, verse number 4. When the chief shepherd shall come, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. When the chief shepherd shall come, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. First, Second Timothy chapter number four, and I'm getting ready to close, but Second Timothy chapter four and verse number six said, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now, I, I, I'd, like to, I'd like for you to understand, amen, the Apostle Paul when he's writing this passage of Scripture. This is the man that had been shipwrecked several times. This is the man that had been stoned and left for dead. This is the man that had had stripes laid across his back. And he stands as an old man and, and he's writing some words and he said, I just want you to know that I've, I've been faithful to God. I've done everything that I can to live for him. But I'm facing the end of my life on this earth. But he said, as I, as I stand back and look over my life, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. He hadn't given it to me yet, but I know it's mine. He said, and, and it's not going to be handed to me by an angel, but the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. He said, there's a day coming. He hadn't been here yet. And I've gone through a lot of suffering, and I've gone through a lot of pain, and I've had a lot of turmoil. But all of this I count but dung, because henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Paul said, the only thing that I'm living for right now is not so that somebody can say, what a great man that he was. But I am looking forward to the day that I take my first step into the heavenlies and I stand before his throne. And I hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things and I will make you ruler over many. <laughs> he said, that's what I've been looking forward to. There's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. But not to me only, he said, but unto all of them also which love his appearing. I wonder if you love a man looking forward to his coming. Are you afraid of it or are you looking forward to it? I wonder today if the Lord, if I were to be able to say, the Lord's coming today. Would you have to spend a couple of hours trying to make everything right? Or, or would you be able to say, thank God, and spend the next couple of hours just rejoicing in the presence of the Lord? Amen. I wonder if, if, if there would be a little bit of change in the way that we, that we had in our mentality if we knew for sure that the Lord was coming in the next two hours. 
I wonder if there'd be just a little bit of a change in the way that we would, would I spend my time in the next two hours trying to reach to somebody else saying, I know I'm saved and now I've got to go to the streets and try to talk to somebody and convince somebody that they need to be repent and be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Or would I be saying, uh, y'all are going to have to fend for yourselves. I've got to spend the next two hours getting myself ready. Paul said, He's coming for those that love His appearing. They've already made themselves ready. They're already ready to go. So the two that looked at the disciples and said, Why stand ye gazing up into the heavens? Spoke 2,000 years ago to a group of people that had clear understanding that Jesus had been born and, and many had not accepted Him. They had watched as the miracles had come and they had watched as different things had happened and uh, many believed, didn't believe on him. It was only 120 amen, in an upper room whenever the day of Pentecost came. Yet thousands were healed by him. And now they're standing there looking up into the heavens and the angels are saying, I just want you to know that the way he left is the way he's coming back. And you hear the conviction and the preaching of the word on the day of Pentecost when Peter said, save yourselves from this untoward generation. What he's saying is, is if you're not ready, you need to be. Because unfortunately, I don't know the hour. I can't tell you that he's coming today. I wish I could and I could say, Jesus Christ is coming in two hours. It's time for you to get to the altar and pray. It's time for you, to, if you've never made things right, it's time for you to make things right today. I wish that I could say for sure that it would happen, but I don't know that. It might be tomorrow, but I have this assurance. He is coming back and I can tell you, He could come back today. So my question would be, are you ready? Jesus is coming back. And He's coming back for those that have made their hearts ready. Are you ready for the soon return of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. Let's stand together today. The same way that He left, the same way He's coming back. These altars are open. Amen. You come on down and let's find ourselves a place. Amen. To talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the Lord today.